welcome to the Lotco Business Podcast, a show all about helping you as a retailer, brand, or creative understand the actual business side of running your business. I offer straightforward, practical advice about the nitty gritty of making money from your creative passion. We will be covering bite-sized business and marketing lessons, as well as interviews with experts and trailblazers in the fashion, homewares, and design industries. My name is Melissa Robbins. I'm a business coach, color-loving, non-coffee-drinking Melbourneian. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to today's episode. My name is Melissa Robbins. I am here today to share with you some tips for trade shows, but this time a little bit different. Last week I bought you part one, which was all about the exhibitors, what you should be doing to maximize that trade show and some you know, mistakes to avoid and things to make sure that you put in place. This week, I am coming from the perspective of the retailer, the buyer. So I have been a retail buyer um, previously in my retail store when I used I changed from being my only brand. I used to had my brand called Moppet and I changed my store to be Moppet and More because I started adding more products to my mix that I was buying from other people. And so I spent many, many years um, buying from other brands as well, attending trade shows from that perspective instead of being the brand this time, I was the buyer. And I've traveled to trade shows all around Australia, all around New Zealand, in um, the US, in the UK, and in Europe as well. So definitely have had my fair share of experience at trade shows. So here we go and 10 tips to smash your trade show and to make sure that you're making the most of the event that you're attending. All right, number one. Be well rested. So make sure you grab a coffee on the way. Don't try not to be rushed. Um, have a notebook and pen ready. Take some notes of, you know, prior to the show, and I'll get to this, you know, get ready, but actually have some things ready beforehand. Make sure you're wearing your most comfortable shoes, which anyone who's done a trade show will know that that is definitely a criteria. Don't wear something new because you'll end up with blisters and you won't be able to, um, you know, walk the whole show. Hydrate. Make sure that you have your water with you. Often there's lines at trade shows and it takes ages to actually stop. So have your water with you, have yourself ready, get your notebook and pen. I one time at a trade show in Sydney when it was a really hot day, I actually caught someone who fainted on me. So I was walking out of the show and she was walking behind me and I actually caught her when she fainted because it was hot and people were not hydrated. So make sure you do that. Luckily, I did catch her. So she was okay. It was all fine. Number two, Make sure that you take some sort of marketing material with you about your store. Now, gone are the days where you might have business cards because it's definitely not something that everyone carries with them now and you can get your information scanned from your badge. But another point to that, sometimes you set up your trade show um, details and so the information that you scan, people scan isn't exactly the details that you necessarily want. So it's a great idea to take a postcard or a business card with you to showcase who you are and showcase the suppliers, you know, what you're about and what sort of things that you do to promote your store or how you run your store. You're going to look way more professional and way more on top of things if you can understand, if they know that you know how to market it yourself as well. So have something that you want the information you want people to use. You might not want them to get the store details that you've scanned your information in with. So take something or a printout, even if it's a little piece of paper that really showcases who you are and the information you you want the brands to contact you with. All right. So number three, visit with an action plan and a strategy so that you know exactly what you're there for. Have a look at your data before you go to the show. Have a look at your analytics. Have a look at your previous sales and have a look at what opportunities you've got. Are you, have you mapped out, you know, how much you've got of certain products in store already or already coming in? Do you need, do you have gaps for a certain price point or do you have gaps for a certain category? Are you looking at things and you've had the same sort of stuff for a long time in your store? Do, do you need something new? Do you need something different? Have a, budget in mind for each category that you might be, you know, adding or spending money on and maybe have budgets in mind for brands that you might be, you know, focusing on. And then always keep some aside for the new because you just don't know what um, new product could be the next amazing thing that's at this trade show that you hadn't even thought about that you need to actually buy. So make sure you have a little bit in your budget for getting something new 
whether that's over a few different months, like you don't have to buy everything to get instantly. You can schedule them out over the next um, period of time. So you've got things dropping in at the right time and not everything all at once. We all know cash flow is an issue there as well. So definitely have a little think about, you know, how you can keep things aside. Um, Make sure when you go, walk all the aisles, look at every section. You just don't know what could be that one little thing that one brand's got that really could be your next, you know, best selling product. Or even if you're going to all the different shows and you're not buying big brands all the time or known brands, can you buy products that are clean skin products that you can actually, you know, boost your margin on slightly depends on what the product is. Can you rebrand or relabel so that you can resell it at a different price? Now, again, you're not going to do that with brand products, but maybe things that are from importers and things that you can slightly change the margin on. All right. Number four. Talk to the suppliers, ask them their story, get to know them. The more you learn, the more you'll be able to sell when it comes back to it comes into your store. Customers love a story and understanding the you know the why behind a brand. So you getting to know that story, you getting a little bit of information from the suppliers and connecting with them means that you can pass it on to your customers as well. So get some brand history, get some um, understand what the brand values are of the products that you're going to buy. It'll help you connect with that brand even more. And the more you love something when it comes into your store or your staff, the better they're going to be able to sell it. And so then the faster they can sell things and you get better margin as well. So get to know the brands, get to know the story behind them as well. So that's number four. Number five, a little bit about number three, but what is your store missing? Do you need that new category? Should you be continually involving and editing what you've got in for offer on offer? Know your data, know what your best-selling products are or best-selling categories are, and maybe try and get more in that range or get some products that give you that little bit of extra margin too. What are some essentials that you should be stocking? Having a chat to your suppliers if you've got some products you're like, I never should run out of this product, making sure you know what the supply chain is of that so that you know when you have to reorder, like what is the time frame to get that back in again. Always review your actual data and store before you go and have a little scan and think about what gaps you've got. Do you need price points in you know particular category? Do you need things for certain age or target market? Do you need more things for tweens or teens or or for for men or for you know the women like what do you need in your store that maybe you're missing and also is there opportunity to add more of that best selling category that you people love to come to you for that's maybe your big point of difference so really understanding what your store's missing what opportunities there are for adding some new things in All right number 6 don't rush You don't want to be the one to miss out on looking for new suppliers, but make sure that you don't sort of rush around so quickly that you're not really taking the time to get to know all the, you know, stands that are there and all the different products are available. So make sure that you spend the time to sort of see what's around, you know, if you need to come back and revisit like another day, then that's often what people do to have that little think about it. Number seven is think about the upcoming season. Do you need counter fillers for Christmas or hats for summer or outdoor tableware? Like think about the the next six months ahead. What are the things that you're going to need to drop in? Can you spread them out over that season? Do you need particular things for gifting? Um, maybe make sure that you, you, you know, your buy is considered and has some history or data behind it. Don't just go in blind and Gut is great for buying and gut is great for, you know, having something different, but then also have that be backed up by a little bit of information as well, a little bit of data too. All right, number eight is if you're undecided, take that information away um, and think about it. Make some notes while you're there to, tri- you know, like circle the things that you like of the products when you see them in person. Make some notes to help you trigger your memory later. Take photos if they, you know, ask that all that's all okay. And then email yourself that, yeah, are you really like these particular colorways in person when you got to see them? Or email yourself and be like, okay, I need to follow up with this brand because this is one of my favorites from the show. So make sure that you really consider everything. Don't rush. You take away as much information as possible. Ask as much information, but then yeah, take that away if you need to um, rethink your decision. Like don't rush it. If you do place orders on the day, make sure you keep a note. Like, you know, the brands that you've spent money on. So brand X, you know, spent a thousand dollars. Brand B, you know, this new category and this amount so that you're really making sure that your spreadsheets and your spending is staying on track and you don't have to sort of, you know, adjust or change that afterwards as well. 
All right, number nine is be sure to, and this is a bit of a contradiction, but be sure to order sooner rather than later so you don't let a competitor lock in that brand in your area and you don't miss it and you miss out on it. This used to happen to me quite a lot because the store that I had um, in inner city Melbourne, there was a toy, I had a children's wear gift store, lifestyle store, and there was a, a store across the road, which is a children's toy store. And they would often go the first day of the show and get all these brands that I don't really think that was probably right for them, but they got them so I couldn't get them. So really make sure that you know your your if you know that there's a brand that you want, try to get it as soon as possible. Or if you see something you like it, you know, talk to them and chat to them and try and get your order in first, even if it's a smaller one at the start, so that you lock that in. Because you really want to make sure that you don't get caught out by missing out just because you're, you know, delaying things too much. So I know that's a contradiction to what I just said, but it's all about, you know, making sure you know which things your customer, your competitor might want as well and sort of understanding that too. So just have a think about that. Number 10 is come back. If you need to see something again and again, visit again. This is a critical time of year, so you don't want to miss out on having the right things. So Often I would go to the shows on, they might be a four day show. I would go on the first day, check everything out, maybe go to the different show on the second day if there was a different event in another location. Um, come back to the first show, really make my decision and, and, you know, maybe buy a few things on that first day, but then the third day or the second day, go back and really take my time and go around again and make sure that I had the right things in place, that I'd spent the right amount of budget and that I'd picked up the right categories and I'd, you know, picked up an even amount of old and new brands as well and new stockers, new suppliers. So really having to think about, you know, making sure the most, making the most of the show and the days that you're there, don't rush it. Don't do things too quickly. We all spend, well, maybe it's just me, um, a lot of time talking to people and a lot of time interacting. And it's really worth making sure that you're focused on what the task is and ticking that off before you sort of, you know, go on to the next thing that you might be working on. So really have a think about how you can do that. So let's just go over that again. Top 10 things for buyers, retailers, retailers and buyers and how to smash your next trade show. One, be well rested and be prepared. Get your coffee and stuff on the way. Number two is make sure you take some sort of form of contact with you, whether it's a postcard or a business card, so you can share that with your potential new suppliers. Number three is go in with an action plan and have a strategy of what you want to buy and how much budget you might want to spend. Number four is take the time to build relationships with suppliers and talk to them about their story. Number five is make sure that you've reviewed your data and your store beforehand to see what potentially is missing or what you could evolve and add to really help you, you know, take that next step in your store. Number six is don't rush. You don't want to be, you know, the first, you don't want to miss out on locking that person in, but you also don't want to um, rush too quickly. Number seven is think about the upcoming season. How far ahead do you need to buy? Do you need to buy, you know, six three to four, six months in advance, have a little think about how you can space those things out. Number eight is take things away. If you're not sure, make notes, trigger your memory, take photos just in case you you can't remember everything because you've seen so much on that whole time you've been there. Number nine is be sure to order sooner rather than later, which I know contradicts number seven uh, or number six. Don't let a competitor lock in brand um, if you, you know, really want something, get in there and get it first. Number 10 is come back, view the sh- review and go back again and again and revisit the stores to make sure that you've got the right things at the right time and that you've really looked at the whole show and you haven't missed out on anything. All right, so that's the top 10 things as a retailer and buyer that you should be considering for a trade show. I'm sure I've missed some. I'm sure there's more things that I could add in here, but I just thought I'd give you a 10 quick hits and tips for when you're actually going to the show, when you're actually going to be visiting, you've spent the money to go there, you've got a budget of what to spend, make the most of it and enjoy and really soak up that atmosphere and the physicality of being able to see things, meet people in person, have a chat, the visual feast that is all the VM and the displays, really maximize that and yeah, enjoy the shows that you go to and don't look at them as a chore and look at them as something that, you know, is a great way to get out of your own space and out of your own retail store and into to see what else is going on, to pick up trends and to notice what's going on and to get inspired again. So it's a great way to do that. Oh, I just remembered one thing. 
Make sure you go along to the education sessions that are available. There's such great information that you can take from those shows too, and you can really get great inspiration and ideas, and it's often free that you can go to these um, sessions as well. So maximize your use of that and try and slot some of those into your schedule too to really help you um, you know, take some of those new ideas home with you um, back to your store and back to help your business even more. I hope that's helpful and I love sharing all this information. So I look forward to sharing more on the podcast with you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Lotco Business Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you subscribe to receive future episodes as they are released. And I'd be so, so grateful for a review on Apple Podcast. If you would like a copy of the show notes or any of the links mentioned today, please jump onto my website at thelotco.com.au forward slash podcast. Have an amazing week and I look forward to chatting to you again soon. Mm -hmm.